Chapter Three: Hungry for Hope. Leah watched Jacob and Rachel from behind the tent flap. They were sitting under the shade of a tree some distance from the ranch. Rachel was saying something, a silly expression on her face, and Jacob was laughing seriously. When he brushed Rachel's cheeks with the back of his palms, the girl gawked at him like he was a Persian prince come down from his chariot to rescue her. Leah released the tent flaps and sat slowly, placing a hand on her throbbing chest. She gazed at her reflection in the polished brass mirror, and ran her fingers through her silky smooth hair. It was long and dark, but thin compared to Rachel's bouncing head of curls. She examined her face. She had her mother's pale complexion and delicate eyes. They speak of wisdom. Mother would say every time she compared it to Rachel's beautiful, bold eyes. How she missed her mother. Beauty. Is not skin deep. There must be more to a woman than what pleases the eyes. Mother would tell her young girls as they came of age and began obsessing over their parents. Leah had observed Rachel's transition into womanhood. As though her facial beauty was not enough, her form had filled up gradually until she had more curves to speak of than their mother. Still, she maintained a slender waist and figure. Soon, Rachel was the attraction of every man and the envy of young women. They all spoke of the famous shepherdess of the house of Laban, until it became as though Rachel were the only daughter born to father. But something about Jacob made him seem different from the others. Leah picked up a skin of water and marched to where her brothers stood at the ranch. She tightened her hold on the water skin, pondering how she would go about shifting his attention. Surely, a man so devoted to his God and so skilled in his work would desire a more homely woman. Rachel was wild. Water to cool your heads, she said. Her brothers immediately seized whatever conversation they were having on her arrival. What is it? She forced her lips to maintain a smile, doing all she could to avoid looking in the direction Rachel and Jacob sat. Hasn't she heard? Naho whispered, looking confused. Peleg nudged him to be silent. They all went about their business except Naho, who stood staring at her with what looked like pity on his face. Heard what? They ignored her. Heard what? She repeated firmly to her younger brother, knowing he wouldn't keep anything from her. Rachel is now betrothed to Jacob. Naho said, head bent. Goodness. You have a big mouth," Iba muttered, obviously annoyed. Naho shrugged. Better she found out sooner than later. Leah stood frozen by the news. Was that even possible? She was the older daughter, and Jacob. She turned to look at them. It all made sense now. Her head spun. She abandoned the water skin and ran to find father. How could you, father? Leah cried uncontrollably. She found herself wedged between two hurts: her father's inconsideration of her feelings and Jacob's choice of Rachel over her. But what had she expected? He was a man driven by the same passions as the rest. Can't you see? You have stamped me as rejected before all. They will all think there's something wrong with me. Nonsense, Leah. There is nothing wrong with you. It isn't entirely unheard of to betroth the younger sister before the older. Leah burst out again in despair. She could have recovered easily from Jacob's rejection, but the idea of her younger sister settling before her drove the hurt deeper. This is for the best, child. I did this for the good of the family. Jacob is very valuable to us. She knew what he meant. Father couldn't afford to lose Jacob. This blessing thing he carried and spoke of was undeniable. But she was his daughter. Perhaps 
We should be better devoted to Yahweh since we so covet his good will. Her tone surprised even her, but father remained calm. Oh, nonsense. Those pompous Hebrews hold on to the notion that Yahweh favors them specially. Laban shrugged. There is no telling what exactly they do to appease him. Father knew complete devotion to Yahweh like the Hebrews would mean forsaking the ancestral idols. But consider this, Leah. Now that every young man knows Rachel is no longer available for marriage, you have a better chance. Very clever. Leah thought father's cunning wit always came to his rescue. But perhaps he was right. She desperately wanted to believe him. Even though it was clear his first concern was for an increased fortune. Still, a hunger for hope made father's words like soothing honey, and she clung to them. Seven years was a long time. Seven years later, the very sight of Jacob irritated Laban nowadays. The young man sat across from him with that mystical gaze on his face. Laban knew what was coming. The agreed seven years were up, and his younger daughter would have to be given away before the older sister. Perhaps the betrothal should have been kept secret. Word had spread quickly and many men avoided Leah, concluding she must have some physical infirmity. The years went by and Laban was now left in a difficult position. Jacob was all too aware, but his eagerness for his wife would suppress any form of sympathy. Uncle, I must remind you that in a week, I would have worked seven years for you. Indeed, they seem to me like only a few days, for the love I have for Rachel is too great. Yes. We must make preparations for the great day. What could be done about Leah? No need singing a praise to Jacob. He had walked seven years. Initially, Laban thought the young man would request for more before the seven years were up. Now it was clear what his one valued possession would be. But this time, I have things under my control. <laughs> 